On April 15, it will have been 110 years since the Titanic went down after colliding with an iceberg on April 14, 1912, at 1140 in the evening. Approximately 375 nautical miles to the south of Newfoundland, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, was where the ship was positioned at the time. The experts who have looked into the incident, including the remains of the ship that were found on the ocean floor in 1985, have come to the conclusion that there is not one single component that caused the accident. So, let's take a look at the top five big mistakes that led to the sinking of the Titanic. But before starting, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And now, let's get started. 5. The Coal Strike of 1912 In January of 1912, coal miners in Britain made the decision to go on strike in order to demand that they be paid minimum pay, which caused issues in the shipping business. On April 6, 1912, the miners' strike came to an end, which was good news. However, the bad news was that there wasn't going to be enough time to transport newly mined coal to the ports before the Titanic set sail for the first time. The management of the Titanic decided to purchase coal from other ships that were docked in order to circumvent the speed restrictions that had been placed on the ship. As a result, a significant number of their passengers purchased passage on the Titanic. However, before it could set sail, the infamous ship's hull was compromised as a result of a fire that started by itself within one of its vast coal bunkers. The fire severely weakened a significant portion of the ship's hull and prevented it from sailing. The Titanic, much like other ships of its day, only featured a single hull rather than the two that are typical of modern ships, because the bunkers in which the crew kept coal to fuel the engines were located in close proximity to the ship's hull. The heat from the fire transferred directly to the surface of the ship, which caused structural damage. The owners of the Titanic were aware of this information, but they chose to disregard it out of concern for negative publicity and out of a desire to keep the ship on schedule. Therefore, there was no way that people could back out of the trip. The fact that the floating mountain of ice may have happened to strike the exact area where the hull had been damaged by a coal fire that was blazing in the bowels of the passenger ship is therefore a coincidence. 4. Cost Cutting in 1985, an American-French team was eventually successful in finding the historically significant wreck. The Titanic had not sunk intact after colliding with the iceberg, as had been previously believed by investigators. Rather, the ship had broken apart on the surface of the water after colliding with the iceberg. They came to the conclusion that the shipbuilders' ambitious plans to construct three large ships at the same time have placed a significant strain on the shipyard. This strain was not caused by financial constraints, but rather by time constraints. They began utilizing material of a poorer quality in an effort to fill the gaps. The Titanic was held together by over 3 million rivets, and when researchers examined 48 of the rivets that were hauled up from the debris, they discovered that the rivets included significant concentrations of slag. Slag is a remnant left over from the process of smelting metal, and it can make the metal more prone to fracture. The bow and stern of the ship were constructed out of substandard iron by hand pounding them. Steel rivets, which are considerably more robust than iron rivets, were placed in the more easily accessible center of the ship in areas of the ship that were inaccessible to the enormous equipment necessary to pound in steel rivets. The weaker iron rivet in the bow of the Titanic popped when the ship collided with the iceberg, which opened cracks in the hull and ultimately led to the ship's collapse. Because of this, the fact that the water stopped rising at the point in the hull where the steel rivets first started is not a coincidence. 3. Captain Edward J. Smith's Mistake According to the findings of a study that was conducted in 2012, it was determined that Edward John Smith, the captain of the Titanic, did not pass his initial navigation assessment. The examination was intended to assess the knowledge, experience, and self-control of sailors, in addition to general good behavior. In spite of this, the captain did not obtain his master's certificate until February of the year 1888, when he was 38 years old. This may have contributed to the sinking of the Titanic, since the ship was traveling too quickly for the cold conditions, clocking in at 40.24 kilometers per hour, and Captain Smith, who had more than 30 years of experience at sea, 
paid too little attention to the iceberg warnings he had received. Even the lifeboat drills that were supposed to take place in the morning on the day the Titanic sank were canceled by him. The body of the captain, who went down with the ship when it sank, was never found again. 2. No binoculars The crew members who were up in the crow's nest, looking for icebergs, did not have binoculars with them, thus they missed seeing it. David Blair, the second officer of the Titanic, who had the key to the binocular storage room in his pocket when he was transferred off the ship prior to her departure from Southampton on its maiden voyage, neglected to hand over the key to the officer who replaced him. The binoculars were lost after the disaster. At a later investigation into the thinking, a lookout on the Titanic stated that using binoculars could have helped them detect the iceberg in time to avoid colliding with it. As a memento of his close call, Blair kept the key in his possession. In 2007, it was put up for auction, and it brought somewhere around 90,000 pounds. 1. Not enough lifeboats Regardless of what led to the sinking of the Titanic, the ship should have had a sufficient number of lifeboats on board to accommodate all of its passengers and crew members. This would have prevented the tragic loss of so many lives. However, the liner sailed away from Southampton with just 20 lifeboats that had a combined capacity of 1178 passengers. A public official who assessed the Titanic in Southampton suggested that it should have carried 50% more lifeboats. His handwritten notes from the time revealed, many years later, that he believed he would be in danger of losing his job if he did not give the famed ship permission to set sail. Because of the confusion that transpired after the Titanic collided with an iceberg, the 20 lifeboats that were sent from the ship did so with around 400 seats empty, which meant that more than 1,500 people were doomed to die in the icy waters of the Atlantic. About 705 individuals were able to save themselves by boarding the available lifeboats. Unfortunately, antiquated maritime regulations did not require the ship's designers to include a sufficient number of lifeboats to secure the survival of all of the ship's passengers and crew members. As a matter of fact, the Titanic only had enough lifeboats to save a little bit more than half of its passengers and staff members. If properly loaded, the lifeboats weren't adequately loaded, and about 1,517 people killed as a result of the tragedy. Hence, it is considered to be one of the deadliest peacetime maritime disasters in the history of the world. In summary, high speeds, a fatal wrong turn, cost cut, weather conditions, a dismissed key iceberg warning, and lack of binoculars and lifeboats all contributed to the worst maritime tragedies in peacetime. Could the Titanic have been stronger? Certainly higher quality rivets or a thicker hull might have kept the ship afloat longer, but ultimately the Titanic was designed to be a passenger liner, not a battleship. The ship was built to the best of their knowledge at the time and to the proper standards. Nothing could have survived. What happened to it? Extensive forensic analysis of the wreckage has, in a way, brought the story of the Titanic to a familiar place. The ship was not just designed to run into icebergs, and when it did, nothing could stop its journey to the bottom of the Atlantic. Criminal negligence, tragic and unfortunate chain of coincidences, took the lives of hundreds of people still keeps the minds of researchers busy till this day. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.